All right. Happy Tuesday, everybody. We are so excited to welcome everybody to our mental wellness um, Tuesday overview. We love our Tuesdays. This is just a place of gathering and hopefully we can share some stories tonight that maybe offer some hope, right? Um, my name is Alex Heidemann. I'm here with my husband, Lucas, and we are super excited to be here with the Cotton Studies. We're here with Lisa and Kylan and they're in Colorado. We're in Wisconsin and we're coming at you just raw, real, and here to share why our families have chosen this brand and this mission and this advocacy of mental wellness. Um, so we're going to dive right into it. So thank you guys for taking your time out of your busy schedules. Kids, Kylan, you just got home, right? About five minutes ago. I'm sure I do not snore <laughs> in wrestling practice. <laughs> I love it. That is great. Um, I am I'm just going to share my. <laughs> I love it. All right. So I'm going to try and share my screen here if I can. It's not. Let's see. Well, that's okay. It's not going to let me, um, which is totally fine. So we are a part of the first ever mental wellness company. And what we love to advocate, advocate for is not just mental wellness. I think that we find this a lot within young families is that people want to stand up for mental wellness and make an awareness to it. Lisa, Kylan, I don't know if you guys see this um, on social media and Kylan being a teacher in his field too, but we find we see a lot of people bring awareness to anxiety, depression, postpartum, and the word mental health and mental wellness, but there aren't solutions. Would you guys agree that people just kind of promote the words that are out there and they don't really have a tool? And that's what we found here is that um, we have to educate people on it and that we actually have solutions. So I'd love in the chat box, if everybody who is joining us tonight could put a one, if they were taught how to take care of their mental wellness, if you were taught growing up, whether you're 20s, 30s, 40s, beyond, I know we have some young families on tonight, but who here was taught? Because I was not. Were you taught in school how to take care of your mental health? No, no. Not at all. Were you guys, were you taught? No. Were you? No, I mean, mine was just probably through faith. And that was about it. Um, and sometimes that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that was about it. Right. 100%. Now we have some solutions. And we're going to share some of those and why we became so passionate about them. So Lisa, Kylan, um, I would love for you guys to share with us and especially Kylan, maybe first as we're going to cover some men's health. But Kylan, for you in your industry and in the teaching world, um, is this being taught now? Was it ever? And what are you seeing in that field? And then what are you seeing personally? Like, where were you before Amari? What are you seeing in your world and personally? Yeah, um, at the school level, I mean, definitely, especially through the pandemic and kids being sent home and, and um, you know, being kind of forced to learn online and be masked up and all this stuff. Um, has just really taken a toll on everybody's mental wellness, but especially like teenagers who, um, you know, are, are already kind of um, unsure of who they are. And so they're, you know, disengaged. And um, I think their mental wellness is actually has decreased quite a bit. Um, and because of that, I think people are aware of that and they're highlighting it, but they're not really sure what to do outside of, you know, seeing a counselor and, um, you know, like there's, there's definitely things you can promote for, for mental wellness, whether it's exercise or, um, you know, just talking to somebody, but I feel like very few people are aware of things that we can do on the inside of our bodies, um, that are not, you know, medicinal, that are not, uh, pharmaceuticals that, you know, cause us to be, you know, a certain level, um, 
in order to handle our mental wellness. So I think people are just unaware of the natural resources that um, we might have to handle some of those issues, especially teenagers and, and parents of teenagers. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of parents that reach out to us daily and they're like, hey, you know, how's my kid doing? How can we help them and stuff? And, you know, I'm, it's a good avenue to be able to try to um, get them to understand that there's more than just counseling or, or exercise. And it might be something that's internally you know, we can address without turning to a doctor and, and strong pharmaceuticals. Totally. Oh my goodness. I, um, recently I just did a mental health for teens event and it was at a high school and it was crazy to me how many booths were of, and there's a time and a place for counseling and therapy. I swear by it and love it too, but you go home and it's not quite that root cause, right? Getting to that root cause, there's a release there, but not quite to the root cause of it. And um, then the other booths were like the paramedics and the EMS with overdose survival kits. It was almost like the too late, there was no prevention. So that was just crazy to me that we were the only tool there for prevention. So, okay, so there's obviously a huge need in our world, but going back to both of you personally, where were you before Amare and what really drew, drew you here for whole health for, for your whole family? Yeah. Um, do you want me to start? Sure. Okay. Well, yeah. So we have two kiddos and we've been married for a little over 10 years and um, pregnant with our third. And so really the timing of Amare came into our lives just totally perfectly because I was pregnant with our second and I actually, it was Christmas day and we decided to jump in with Amari and we thought, this is cool. Like no one's doing this, this gut brain connection, you know, holistic solutions for mental wellness. Like no one's doing this. This is great. I didn't really think I needed it. And I don't mean to sound like, oh, I didn't need it, but I just, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't notice, you know, I wasn't very aware. Well, then two days later, um, we found out that our son was going to be born with a heart condition where really he was going to have half of a heart and need three open heart surgeries. And so it was seriously two days later. So I think we just realized like, okay, well, maybe we need some help with our mental wellness. <laughs> and so the timing of Amari just came into our lives really, really perfectly. Um, so yeah, that was kind of a bit of our story. And um, I started taking the products right away. Um, and then kind of what you're speaking to Alex with, you know, the teenagers not having these resources. I think we see that across the board because um, I used the products for three months and then I had my son Jace and it was hours after he was born. I hadn't even seen him yet. Um, he was in the NICU. I hadn't even seen him yet. And a doctor came in and just said, okay, well, I want you to know you're the perfect candidate for postpartum depression. And pretty much here's your medication. And Kylan was there, so he's my witness. But I, I remember distinctly, I turned to him and I was like, okay, you tell me if I need it because sometimes when we're postpartum, we don't, we don't see the, the craziness, you know, that's happening. Great. Great. I get it. Um, but I was <laughs> like, I, I wanna try this first. <laughs> I wanna do this first. And then if I need that, okay. But like, I want to try this way first, yeah. but it, he had nothing else to tell me. But I think, you know, with both of us starting, Amari, at the time when we did, um, the timing was just perfect for us to build our stress resiliency. Because to be honest, mm -hmm. I feel like Lisa had more postpartum depression with our first child, um, Kara Lee, than with Jace. And, you know, there was way more reason to have depression, you know, following um, our second born because you know one just not getting to hold hold him but more than like five ten minutes before the doctors rushed him away to the NICU um and just having all of that anxiety of like okay what what next you know when when you have a child that is going to be laid out on the operating table and and uh, a super you know high risk um but necessary surgery as as a parent you're you're helpless um and so just being able to deal with that stress and that anxiety, like that was, that had to have been one of the most anxious times in our life, but both of us, I feel like felt 
kind of at peace with it. And, um, you know, I think you know, our faith had, had a huge impact in that, but also just that stress resiliency that we built with Amari and, uh, you know, being able to just handle what was being thrown at us at the time and, and to just roll with it. And, you know, like I said, she had a harder time with her mood and anxiety and stuff following our daughter being born, um, which is crazy. Totally. So would, could you guys almost agree that it was, it was the best time for Amari, but it was almost the worst. I mean, you had uh, a son going through huge surgeries, right? Uh, you already had one, so it wasn't your first. You have a household to take care of. I don't know at this point, were you moving and were you building or not quite yet? I mean, life was just full. You're high entrepreneurs, you're, you're just high level people. So it may have seemed like a horrible time, but it was the best. Yeah, I think it was. It was perfect. And to be totally honest, when I mean, we jumped in, you know, on the business side for sure. But that first, I'd say year, you know, he had two of his open heart surgeries that year. I didn't do a lot. I, and I really did need that time to just take care of myself mentally um, and yeah. to like have my, which I don't always advocate for. I totally think people can just jump in with the business right away. But for me personally, like I just had to be okay before I was helping other people. But yes, it was very much the perfect time because another part of this is the financial piece. And I told Kylan, once I found out about Jace's diagnosis, I said, well, I'm not going back to work. So we're going to move or like, I don't know what we're going to do, but yeah. like, I'm not going to do it because I already, even with our daughter, just wanted to be home. That was just my heart. I wanted to be home. But um, after I found out about him, I was like, nope, not doing it. Well, so Doctors really... <laughs> doctors really encouraged us to uh not have him in daycares and preschools if at all possible just because you know with his diagnosis um his oxygen saturations were a normal of 70 to 80 percent um where ours is like 98 and so a common cold that you know gets into your lungs and nose and throat and stuff um was really risky at, at that young age and stuff. And so, you know, they said, if yeah. we can make it work to where he's not in a preschool and daycare where he's getting all these germs from other kids um, in between these first two surgeries and stuff, then, you know, that, and so we just decided that, that was a priority. Um, and so that's where we just kind of had to make it work. And sometimes that's, that's when you see the most growth is when you, there's no other option and your back's against the wall. Um, and, you know, to kind of add to that, Jace's last surgery was in July um, of 2021. So not real long ago, we had a gap in between his second and his third um, where we did start building and stuff. But I think Lisa can attest to this, but our, our business grew probably the largest that had ever grown in one month during his hospital stay and surgery, that third surgery. So having something that was flexible where Lisa could work from a hospital room um, you know, and, and build a business and be with our son who's in a hospital bed was just really, you know, amazing to, to be able to take the business wherever, wherever we were, um, so that we're not missing out. And there's other families in the hospital that are like, you know, the, the husband or the wife is on a zoom call, you know, with the other spouse in the hospital room and is just not able to be present. Um, so I couldn't imagine what that would what that would be like, but, you know, Amari allowed us that flexibility to both of us could be there and, and, you know, be present in that moment um, because we had that flexibility. Yeah, that's amazing. And a lot of times taking off of probably that much work, either only one per parent is currently working, right? I don't, in that setting, or it has, you're on your own sick time. So if you get sick, you're screwed. You have nothing right for yourself. I mean, that's a, an incredible testament to our financial wellness piece that you actually grew your business in probably one of the hardest, most stressful times in your yeah. family life. That's amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Kind of the stress resilience is the biggest piece. And I think kind of what you're, what you spoke to earlier, Alex, like for young families is that stress resilience, right? I mean, you guys have seen that too, being a young family and just 
just that you need that stress resilience because things get things get chaotic. <laughs> They do. They really do. And I'd love to kind of go back to just a quick snippet of the men's health. And because I feel like our men sometimes get that undermined, they have to be that strong, emotionless, right? And, and the sole providers and which is totally a piece of their role, but not the whole piece. And they still need to be cared for mentally and physically as well. Right. So Kylan, I know you have an incredible story with GBX fit and you started that journey. So I'd love to hear where you were before that and why you dove into our new quad biotic really quick. Um, sure. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I've had a, a great journey with it and I would say that, um, all my life I'm, I'm very good at, I'm very good at dieting, losing weight, changing my body. Cause it was just a part of my life as a football player and wrestler. So I would gain weight in football season and lose weight in wrestling season, um, in high school and it's kind of honestly surprising that I don't have like a eating disorder of, of some sorts, because I mean, really it just does morph your, your view of, of food. Um, I was just telling Lisa this the other night that when I was in high school, like I would lose 20 to 30 pounds uh, between football and wrestling. And so I'm very well aware of how to do that um, from a calories in calories out standpoint. Um, but I know that my mental health was really not good um, during that time. Mm -hmm. Like I, mm -hmm. I could lose weight, but I was not fun to be around. I was grumpy. I was just totally unenjoyable. I would like sneak <laughs> into the sneak into the pantry late at night and it was during Christmas time and I would like scarf some Christmas cookies and pretend <laughs> that it didn't happen. Like really not healthy, <laughs> not healthy just viewpoint of food in general um and you know i just wasn't wasn't happy didn't compete very you know well I, I competed at a high level but um if i had honestly been of the mindset that i am now and had the you know mental wellness that i have now i i fully think i i could have been um at the top of the state instead of fifth and uh so with that said, I, I know how to lose weight, but um, with this journey and jumping in with GBX Fit, it's just a different mindset to it um, with the whole eat, move, sleep program. It's not just a calories in, calories out sort of thing, um, which has been really cool because I, you know, last night I was able to eat everything else that the family was eating. And um, that was not the case when I have gone on diets before is I'm like, oh, I can't eat that or I can't, you know, um, even this last Saturday, we went to we went to a Rocky Mountain oyster feed. So you guys might be familiar healthy. with that in Wisconsin, <laughs> but some people might not. Um, but <laughs> fried, food, um, <laughs> fried food and mac and cheese and stuff. And, you know, I didn't like eat a ton of it just because number one, it's, you know, not the most like appealing thing, especially when you have been eating healthy for a while, you just start to crave healthier foods. Um, but I was able to, you know, participate in something like that, that's social and, um, not be like an outsider where I was in high school. I couldn't eat any of the dark meat Turkey for Thanksgiving dinner, you know, like, um, just crazy things like that. So, um, all in all, I've, since February 1st, I have lost about 26 pounds, 27 pounds. Um, so I, I started out at 200 pounds and down to 173, 174 pounds now. Um, and I thought that maybe my strength would, would decrease um, just because that's been my experience in the past with, with losing weight is I've lost strength as well. Um, but even yesterday I was, I have the, you know, fortunate ability to be able to work out with some of my students occasionally um, since I'm in the weight room most of the time. And I was able to, to do something that I hadn't done since even before when I was 200 pounds. So um, I feel like I'm stronger. I feel like I'm more motivated. Um, I feel like I have more energy uh, than when I was at that heavier weight. And, you know, I'm not having the cravings or the, you know, weird desires that I had with food when I was dieting 
in my past. Um, so I'm not right. watching the Food Network channel salivating and, and, <laughs> and writing down recipes for when wrestling season's over. Like it's something that I can see as being sustainable. Um, and, you know, with just with the whole eat, move, sleep program. And um, so it's been really good. Yeah. I love it. And that's what I love about our brand in general is it's not just a trend. It's not, I shouldn't say it's not a fad. It is a trend because it will continue to move forward, but it's really a lifestyle. We bring these in and these pieces and these products and these programs to uh, have habits and a whole lifestyle for the whole family. And I know for you, so Lucas and I are newly married and um, we have a daughter and I really got into Amari and mental wellness with my daughter in the beginning and my family before this. And so then hubby came in and he was new to the wellness world and this industry. And never even heard about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but where, where were you before this? I mean, you came from a background of not Adderall super. and Quick Trip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not super healthy. <laughs> which, which you did. You were on Adderall at how old? Uh, probably fourth grade. Yeah, probably. Yeah, eight years old, very young, ten, whatever that is, ten to twelve. And um, Quick Trip is a gas station in, in the Midwest. So, oh, yeah, and what is your? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a gas station chain. Yeah. <laughs> And your occupation is lineman, an electrical lineman. Yeah. Yep. So I work outside and constantly, not at the shop, just twenty four seven outside. Yep. And in the trades, I mean, the trades industry isn't always super health conscious. No. No, it was Adderall and coffee and yeah, gas crap, crap food, gas station food. Yeah. <laughs> And now that was then. Now three years later, I it changed a lot for me. I mean, between the the edge and the biotics and mood focus. Mood focus. I take it in the morning. I I was on like probably two to three pots of coffee a day. Yeah, it was terrible. that's what got me through the day. <laughs> it's terrible. And. I think I have like two cups now a week mm -hmm. and it wow. just shut it completely down. Yeah. The craving. Yeah. Yeah. I was on tobacco, mm -hmm. and chew, mm -hmm. smoked a little bit every here and there. And I haven't done any of that in probably two or three years. Yep. And, and completely out. Yep. And the arrow. Yeah. And well, yeah, that was deleted in about a year yep yep so it has been it has been a huge lifestyle change for us too and just making those swap outs that seem little but they've had huge effects and you were having chest pains and a yeah. lot of side effects with things that have now the sweating was one of the biggest things too once I got yeah. off Adderall mm -hmm. I was I was just sweating so bad yeah just walking I was sweating and we found out that it was years and years of adding up to a detox. Yeah. His body was just going through a huge I've detox. Been on for how long? And mm -hmm. Yeah. And I really got started within my daughter having um, an autoimmune condition and high anxiety, poor sleep and eczema. And so this just has been whatever your family's journey is or story, whether it's um, you know, trauma, or it is a at birth, like um, Jace, little Jace with his heart defect, or it's autoimmune or an addictive behavior. We really want to paint the picture that our brand has something that is for the whole family. And that's why our families really, really fell in love with it. And now with our young growing families, Lisa and I are both expecting, I can't wait, we can just continue to grow together in, you know, business and personally and professionally. Um, what I have really loved about adding this brand in now and kind of going off of what Lisa and Kylan said, being pregnant 
is I feel, and this is my second, your third. Um, I do feel that there is just more, <laughs> you added on more, um, not only just more children, but um, more to life. We're in a really chaotic, crazy, full, fast paced world in life right now, where the generations before us weren't going through a pandemic or anything like this since World War II. We're in a very different world now. And it's a lot and it's stressful. And we're in a different industry of social selling. And a lot of people go to work feeling dragged down and not purpose driven. I know we talk about that all the time within this industry that we get to serve people every day and we get to really change lives. And that's fulfilling. Do you guys, do you love waking up and, and serving people, Lisa, and what you do every day? Yes, I do. I was in the medical um, field before and yeah, it was very much like, you know, here's a, here's a medication for this side effect and not every doctor's like that, but uh, in general, the industry can be like that. So yes, I love being able to just help people. And that was a huge thing that was missing for me. I just wasn't, I wasn't passionate about it. I remember after having my first, I came back to work after maternity leave and I felt like this weird time warp had happened because I felt so different. I'd had a child and I came back and mm -hmm. everything was the same. And <laughs> everyone still, the people who hated their jobs, hated their jobs and just nothing changed. And I just, that like ate me up pretty much. And so I love that we don't have this like cap of here's how much you can make. And this is what this does. And, you know, like we just, I feel like as a family yes. and a couple, we can dream again and like, you know, just imagine yep. life different. Yes. I love that. And do you guys have a family legacy? Do you have something you're working towards as a family that you could share with all of us? And if you don't have a family legacy, I would love to um, have you dream tonight with your spouse, your significant other, your children on what your family legacy is. And if you do write it in the chat box, I'd love to hear yours though, if you guys have one. Yeah. So something that's kind of a little newer, do you want me to share? Sure is um so just with our story and with everything with jace and mental wellness and how that all came together very simultaneously um something really that's been on our hearts is just the mental wellness of kids in the hospital and families in the hospital so i know even our son who's three years old like i can honestly tell you like he kind of had some depression seems like a strong word, but like he was bummed out. He was like on his scooter the day before. And then this happened and he was like bummed out. And I remember walking past a room and there was a teenager who was all by himself. And he like, wasn't watching TV. He wasn't reading a book. He was like literally just staring out the door and like into the hallway. And just, he looked so depressed and it just, oh, it just broke my heart. And so I don't exactly know what it looks like, but I feel like something that is helping, you know, kids and families that are dealing with that same thing, which is what I love about Amari. I know you guys know this, but um, Hip talks a lot about like turning your pain into purpose. So like we all have gone mm. through something hard. So like, how can we turn that into serving people? Um, so yeah. I would love to hear your guys' because I know you. Yeah. I love that. Well, and you know, it's funny how life can shift, isn't it? Because I had this dream of starting um, a nonprofit based on Scarlett and I's journey and, and advocating and servicing those who had gone through trauma and the Scarlett Letter Foundation. And now as a family, we've been really just starting our own dream of giving back small to our community first. And we have some of those small dreams starting there, um, but then bigger, um, starting some travel. And we have some announcements that we'll have coming soon with that. But um, we, yes, we will share that soon. But um, what we love here is this legacy piece. And also off of Lisa's comment, HIP has always taught us about money in the hands of good people can do great things. And so if anything has resonated with you here and you just want to evaluate um, a piece of our brand, start with the products, start with you 
you start with feeling the best that you can, just like Lisa and Kylan did in the beginning. Even if you feel like, oh, I'm good. I'm a go-getter. I, I'm a high performer. That's awesome. This is for you too. We love to serve no matter where you are on the mental wellness spectrum. There is something here for you. If you are feeling stuck, if you are feeling like you've settled a little bit in life, in health, in business, wherever that is, talk to the person who invited you tonight because I promise you there might be something here for you. We have a very unique opportunity to serve in the masses. People are looking for what we have. Uh, we are opening in other countries and people are just jumping at the opportunity to um, not only start something that is never been done before, but is greatly needed. So tomorrow night, we have an awesome opportunity to check that out with our corporate team and a couple of um, individuals who have jumped just like the Cotton Studies and the Heidemans and attached this brand to their families. And they're gonna share their stories too. So if you want a little bit more info, uh, tomorrow night is going to give you that. We just love to share stories and some hope and testimonials on Tuesday nights here. So we hope that was for you. Um, lastly, I know we were going to share and we didn't really touch on it, but pregnancy and um, hormones and postpartum. I know you did, Lisa, with where you were your first and second, but how are you feeling now with your Amari baby, your third? How are you feeling and prepping for that? Yeah, this is truly my first like full Amari baby. Jace was like, yeah, Amari baby. Um, yeah. No, it's been great. I mean, I tell people all the time, I really forget I'm pregnant sometimes. And sometimes I felt guilty about that, but I actually think it's a really great thing. I mean, I'm chasing two other ones, but like, I honestly do forget, like I really do. And so I feel really good. Like I feel great. And yeah, she how is, am I doing? Kylie? She's doing a lot better. <laughs> I mean, with our first, like, I mean, Home Depot just Brought, oh. Home Depot and Lowe's brought the worst ever, like bad customer service anywhere. It was like, I did not know her and like, cause she'd be over talking to the managers and I'd have to it's pretend true. that I was, oh. I didn't know her at times. Cause she, her, her fuse was just I a lot. Oh, what, what, Lucas? <laughs> We've just been there a lot. We're under a We've house remodel. <laughs> I can yeah. relate. Yeah. Which is already so stressful. So then throw a pregnant woman in Home Depot and Lowe's and like, it's and, not great. And have people that are just <laughs> good at customer service. And so it was just a, it was like, you know, just a bad storm altogether. Um, but this time around, um, you know, we're still kind of under, we're constantly under construction um, just like because yeah. I do stuff when I yeah. can and uh, do a lot of work on my own. And so. Um, you know, right now we're living in a, in an apartment above a barn that we built, um, about a year ago, we moved in, uh, but there's still some, some things that I need to get to. And <clears throat> I think both of us have just, uh, been able to, um, kind of not let a lot of little things bug us. Um, we're in the past, you know, I know speaking personally, you know, my perfectionism and stuff kind of had my anxiety and stress super high. Mm -hmm. um, we're now, you know, we, we get the things when we can, but we also enjoy life and enjoy, you know, being together as a family and, and yeah. living. And um, I think I can say the same with, with Lisa, just with this pregnancy, um, she's not, you know, she's, she's still able to enjoy the, the busyness of life with two kids um, that we have right now. And I know before that would have been something that she would have been completely exhausted at the end of the day. Um, and so now, you know, at the end of the day, when I get home, um, she's, she still has energy for, for our family. So. I'm still doing underdog it. on the swings. So I'm pretty excited. <laughs> about You're awesome. Still giving up. Okay. 
I, it's so funny that you say you forget you're pregnant. I seriously just had that conversation with my sister yeah. that I'm like, we're life's just so full. We're on the go. It's good. I forget I'm pregnant. I'm like, is that a, it's not a bad thing. It's just, it's a good thing. We feel good. And I think I, I love that more. So I'm feeding, we're feeding our microbiome for baby for development everything that way is all foods, plants, what we're not getting from our food that we should. Um, I've cut cravings and I'm really, really excited about this priming for postpartum of priming for, for good sleep, priming for, um, Dr. Sean was explaining to me about feeding your baby's microbiome is preventing a colic baby and how um, it's going to help with not only just development, but priming for that postpartum for hormones and our bounce back of our bodies too. So I'm excited. We're going to have to do a follow-up. We'll have to do a follow-up postpartum yes, after babies amazing. and let everybody know. Yes. And how have you been feeling on the GBX fit, Alex? Because I know that you've been doing that from the beginning. Good. Yes, I have. And I have felt good. Um, like Kylan said, it's off of the eat, move, sleep. And I have not been doing the fasting. That's the only part of the program I haven't been doing. Um, but I, I feel great. I feel like I was getting um, even kind of like some skin pigmentation within pregnancy and hormones. And that has cleared up. And I feel way better within cravings and energy. Um, so I'm really, we've been doing that program together and I love it. I'm really excited more so for what it's going to, I think what it's going to do and show for after, because right now I'm like, I would love to go into the challenge and see how much I lose, but I'm just gaining. So we can't do that. But I feel great. It's okay. It's just the season of life, but afterward, it's going to be so awesome. <laughs> It is. Yes. So thank you so, so much for your time. Um, I know you guys have dinner and kiddos and we have the same, but thank you for everybody for joining us again. If you have any questions or curiosity, please reach out to the person who invited you. We look forward to giving you a little more info and details tomorrow night. Um, again, if you want that info, it's at, I believe 7 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Pacific, and um, we will get you that info as well. But God bless and thank you for your time and joining us tonight. Thanks. Bye guys. Thanks so much, Cotton Studies. Bye, Bye. Bye everyone.